still wrenching away on the old high boy. Figured I'd show you guys some of the progress I'm making as I go along here. Of course, everything's hooked back up now. Got the replacement radiator in here, all freshly painted. Looks good. And you know I had to throw the old Texaco cap on here off the old one because it just looks cool. And then uh, little things here and there, doing tidy work, cleaning things up, making it look more professional. I ended up changing out my fan belt. The one I was running before was uh, too short. Didn't quite like the setup, so I got a longer one and liked the result of this one much better. And then I went underneath and slapped an oil pan heater on the oil pan so that that can work in conjunction with the circulation heater that we put on in the last video. And then to run both of those, I stuck this Arctic three-way cord in here and plugged the circ heater and the oil pan heater into that. And then I just kind of zip tied everything up down there, kind of tried to hide it the best that I can. And then the cord for the three-way comes out right here so I can plug it in, and get this thing warming up for cold starts in the winter time. And then just little things here and there, zip tying stuff up like these heater hoses and whatnot. I ended up taking my starter cable off here and slid a chunk of heater hose down that to keep the heat from the manifold off of that cable. And uh, let's see what else. Pretty much that's it for under the hood here. I'll have to raise the truck up and show you the heater underneath. Got her raised up in the air to show you underneath real quick. There's the oil pan heater I slapped on. You just stick those on with high temp RTV and they usually stay put. And I just zip tied the cord up all neatly and it runs up to that three-way cord something else here i finally ordered up a proper spare tire for the truck another d stone 750 by 16 extra traction just like what i'm running on the truck right now really like these things but the main reason i ordered it was because the spare i've been carrying all this time is just a random bfg radial and uh of course the height is different than these so if I get a flat on any of these bias plies, of course, if I throw that thing on for a spare, it's going to be a different height, and that's not good on your bearings or axles or drivetrain or anything. So now that I can get a proper matched up spare thrown on that rim and carry that around instead of that radial, so that'll be good. Glad to have another one of these. They, uh, they got a little bit more expensive, but... I don't mind it because I appreciate that companies actually reproduce these things because they're awesome to throw on these old rigs and give them the proper look. So I have to keep buying them here and there, I guess. A few days later now, with pretty much everything wrapped up under the hood for the most part, I've worked my way back to the interior. I've been doing some work in the cab. But before I show you guys what I've been up to, I'll kind of give you a brief history of the truck here. In case that you're new and you didn't know or if you haven't seen the older videos I made on this thing so basically when I was 15 I bought this truck out of a junkyard it was my first ever vehicle that I acquired and of course if you've seen some of my other videos you know I have several now but uh, this was my first truck bought it for a project to fix up and basically turn back into a, a good quality driver so over the course of uh, 2015 up to now, it's been an off and on project. It's gotten shifted around with, of course, new vehicles coming in that I uh, spent time on or whether it be that or, you know, life getting in the way sometimes as well. She's just been bounced around. There's a lot of things I overlooked and skipped over just to get it road legal and start driving it and enjoying it. So Lately, I've been dedicating the time to actually finishing the thing right so that it's, you know, properly completed. So back when I first got the truck, it had an electrical nightmare in the cab. The whole harness in the dash was absolutely butchered up. And whether it melted in the middle or whatever, it was patched together with random wires that were just twisted and taped over. So it was it was a nightmare. And, uh, like a year after I owned the truck, when I was 16, I went to the junkyard and cut out a complete harness out of the cab of a 72 F250 two-wheel drive 
And then barely knowing anything about electrical, I completely spliced it into this system. Uh, any of the underhood wiring that comes out from the firewall, I left alone and I just cut everything on the other side of the firewall inside and spliced that harness into everything. And back then I got probably 90% of everything working, but there were some issues that I just said, ah, to heck with it. It's going to work good enough for now. I want to get out and drive this thing and, you know, focus on getting other things done that the truck needed. So I just overlooked it back then. So what I've done is actually taken the time to go in and go back through this uh, harness that I put in and fix a bunch of issues that uh, it has. So we'll have a peek in here now. Yesterday I spent probably three, four hours and completely took this whole side of the harness out and laid it, you know, outside of the dash and completely went through everything again. I actually broke out the original harness that I cut out of this system and studied a bunch of things on it. I printed off some wiring diagrams and basically I found a lot of mistakes that I made, which I can just blame on lack of experience back then. So, um, it wasn't too bad to figure out. I, uh, I was kind of on a roll going through everything and sorting things out. Now, uh, one thing, of course, this is a 72 harness that I spliced into a 71. And you wouldn't expect anything to be different, but there were actually a couple wires that were different colors that they changed for whatever reason. So uh, between using wiring diagrams and my original harness, I was able to figure out uh, those different color wires and I had uh, a few things hooked up wrong, which, you know, it's good that I didn't create a smoke show or anything in here, but got everything figured out. And one of the things amongst all my issues was the dome light never worked. And as you can see, that's working now. And of course you got the switch for the door when it shuts, goes out and comes back on. So that's great. I'm happy about everything in here being pretty much resolved now. And then after I got everything straightened out, I went all through and zip tied things up better than I had, taped a bunch more stuff up. And as you can see, there's not much hanging down under here. The fuse box is mounted, so on and so forth. So really happy to have solved a bunch of the electrical issues I had in the past. Now it's done right. Something else I got to do while the cluster's out, I got to go all through that, clean it up, replace a bunch of the light bulbs in the back because pretty much half the thing is dead and doesn't light up when the, the light switch is on. So got to go through the cluster and clean that up. And here we'll walk over here and I'll show you guys the harness that I cut out of this thing back then. And as you can see, it's just a true mess. I don't know what happened to it, but the whole center section of it is missing the original wires and then somebody spliced in these oversized wires and just twisted things together and wrapped them with tape so you know it was good and when i first got the truck and was playing around with you know studying electrical and figuring out why it nothing worked i found a 22 shell in the fuse box which you know that was common back in the day just throw a shell in there but the thing with this one was they put a live 22 shell in there. So, you know, if you had a short, you were going to know it because it would just, you know, fire off a shot. So that was pretty comical. I wish I had gotten a picture of it before I took that out. But I think I have the shell somewhere. So, uh, yeah, I dug this old thing out, studied a bunch of things on it. And it actually helped me figure some things out. And of course, I printed off the diagrams for the whole system and that helped as well so yeah surprisingly for as messy as this is it was actually helpful so bonus to that one of the next things coming up here after i'm completely satisfied with the electrical and the cluster goes back in i've got to pull my steering column out i've got all the stuff sitting here to fully rebuild that and then i gotta pull my steering shaft off and change the u-joint out because it has a bunch of slop in it 
Now the manual steering box, I did loosen the jam nut and tighten down the adjuster screw a little bit. And that did help with the steering slop and rattling that I've got. Although I think the rest of it is in that U-joint and then the column being worn out. So I'm going to totally rebuild all that. And then after the steering column and all that is all set, we're going to rack her back up on the lift and pull all four wheels off and go completely through brakes all the way around. I've only had the front drums off. I've never had the rears off. And other than a new master cylinder and wheel cylinder on this side, they're all original. I've never touched the brakes on it. I have bled them, but um, that's all that I've done. So we're going to completely go through and do up the brakes so that this thing is 100% up to par for the brake system because they're they're kind of marginal right now. I mean, they do work, but I'm not happy with them. Of course, it is a non-boosted truck so i'm only gonna get it so perfect and uh yeah so that's some of the next upcoming stuff anyways enough of me rambling on about things we'll go ahead and call it a video here just want to show you guys what's been going on with the truck and what i've been doing to it now when it comes time to rip the steering column out and rebuild that and go through the whole brake system i'll be sure to film some uh, videos of the actual work that goes on rather than just walk around and tell you what I've done. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this video. Glad to be showing you guys some of the progress on this thing. And I'm glad to be finally back on to working on it and getting it done right so that I can pro properly get out and enjoy the thing. So it's uh, it's been an adventure for sure. I've owned this thing since 2015. So it's about time it gets finished right. So thanks for watching and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.